Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Macros are little programs that you can record that automate repetitive tasks for you. They are basically little programs. What a macro does is it records your keystrokes as you perform some sort of task routine and saves your keystrokes as a visual basic module, which is a type of small program. When you play back the macro later, it will repeat your keystrokes and thus repeat your actions. This is why they're great for instantly performing menial tasks. You use the macro recorder to record your macros. To start recording a macro, you can click the Macros drop-down button that appears in the Macros group on the View tab within the ribbon. Then select the Record Macro command from the drop-down menu that appears. In the Record Macro dialog box that appears, type the name that you want to give to your new macro into the Macro Name text box. Macro names cannot contain any spaces. Note that you can also create a custom keyboard shortcut to use in conjunction with the control key by typing the desired shortcut key letter into the text box next to the control plus. If you decide to do this, make sure you don't overwrite an existing shortcut. For example, the shortcut character of P would be a bad choice, as control plus P is already a keyboard shortcut for the print command. If you aren't familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, it may be better if you don't assign one. Next, select where you want to save the macro by choosing the desired macro file from the Store Macro in dropdown. If you do not change it, it will default to saving the macro into the global file. This is important because a macro can only be run if it is saved into an open project file or stored into the global file which contains the default project template objects. Next, you can type a description of the function of the macro into the description field. This is an optional step, but it can help clarify the purpose of the macro if the name is unclear. The types of cell references that you make while recording a macro can also be adjusted. If recording a macro using relative references, the movements that are recorded are noted in relative terms. For example, a macro that moves the active cell down one row, recorded in relative terms, will always move the active cell down one row from whichever row happens to be initially selected when the macro is run in the future. If you record a macro using absolute references, the macro will always select and move to the exact same cells in the project file, regardless of which cell is initially selected when the macro is run in the future. You can adjust which type of referencing is used when recording the new macro by selecting the desired options in the Row References and Column References sections. By default, macros will record using relative references for row references and absolute references for column references. When you're ready to start recording your actions, click the OK button. At this point, all of the keystrokes that you enter will now be recorded. Now be careful what actions you perform, as any mistakes that you make will also be included as part of the macro. If you do make a mistake though, you can simply stop recording the macro and delete it. Then you can try again. To stop recording your actions once you've finished, simply click the Macros button that appears in the Macros group on the View tab in the ribbon and choose the Stop Recording command from the drop-down menu that appears. 
Now to run a macro that you have recorded, you can click the Macros button that appears in the Macros button group on the View tab in the ribbon, and then choose the View Macros command from the drop-down menu that appears. This will then launch the Macros dialog box. Within this dialog box, you will see a listing of any available macros. Select the name of the macro that you want to run, and then click the Run button at the right side of the dialog box to run the selected macro. Finally, you can delete macros that you have stored in a workbook. To do this, you would click the Macros drop-down button that appears in the Macros button group on the View tab in the ribbon, and then choose the View Macros command. In the Macro dialog box, simply select the name of the macro that you want to delete from the list of macros. Then you would simply click the Delete button at the right side of the dialog box. You will be prompted to confirm the deletion of the macro by clicking Yes in the pop-up window that appears. You can cancel the deletion by clicking No instead. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.